Welcome to the Business and People podcast. I'm your host, Walt Bayless, and on today's show, we're talking to New York Times best-selling author, Ron Douglas. Ron, who's authored many, many books, has come from a corporate background through into becoming an entrepreneur. And we talk about lessons learned, what he'd do differently, and some incredible uh, strategies for making sure that you are achieving clarity and happiness in your life. This was a really entertaining podcast for me. Uh, Ron's been somebody that I followed on social media and someone that I look up to personally. He has really defined what it's like to move forward through, talks about work ethic, talks about uh, making sure you're hustling, but at the end, making sure you're hustling towards the goal that's going to achieve happiness. This was a terrific interview. Please enjoy our Business and People podcast episode with Mr. Ron Douglas. Ron Douglas, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Man, it's a, it is a real pleasure. I, I just said in the interview that you've sold over a million books uh, and you're a serial entrepreneur, you're an investor. I mean, that's a lot of hats, but Ron, that's a long way from where you've come from, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I came from this uh, little one bedroom apartment. I was just trying to figure out how to make a little extra money. During my downtime when I wasn't working for JP Morgan Chase, just to be able to uh, spend more time with my kids. So that was it. And then one thing led to another and, and you know, here I am. <laughs> wow, that's amazing! How did, how did you get into the uh, into the author world? Was that was that a natural progression for you? Well, it just kind of made sense because um, I was looking for something to sell back in the days on on ClickBank, which is a network where a lot of affiliates, other sites would come looking for products to promote, so you could put your product on that network, and people will start promoting it, and you could pay them like a commission for referring you sales, which is pretty cool. So. I was just looking for something different to put on there. And I noticed yeah. that the cooking category was a really wide open category that I could kind of put a product on and dominate. So I kind of did a little research and stumbled upon an wow. idea of secret restaurant recipes. That's amazing. And, and uh, like you, I'm looking at uh, the, the previous life as, a, as an analyst in the finance world, you've taken that into the online marketing space and said, here's, a, here's something I can dominate. And you've literally created an empire into that space. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I started out with just an ebook, and then people started asking, like, do you have a physical cookbook? So I ended wow. up creating a physical cookbook for it. Man, I, ha I have to ask, can you cook? Yeah, yeah, I can cook. I'm not a professional chef or anything. I actually took a lot of cooking lessons to uh, kind of not embarrass myself when I went on television. That's on awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. So moving from like the corporate space into the entrepreneurial world and choosing that kind of uh, path of the author um, really creates a, a long lasting legacy, you know, something that that's bringing in royalties day after day. Uh, I noticed, you know, going back to America's Most Wanted Recipes uh, was was quite a few years ago now. Do you still make sales of that original book? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's still in bookstores. I still have some self-published books that I sell related to that topic as well. So I still get nice royalty checks twice a year. That's and I still have my business in the uh, cooking market online, my, my education and publishing business. That's so cool. And, and from that original publication, you've been able to create a franchise. I mean, now you've gone, you, got, you went into America's Most Wanted Recipes for the Grill. You've gone into desserts. You've gone into the kids section. Was that the original intention or was it just kind of, hey, this is working. Let's push it as far as we can play. Oh, it was absolutely like, hey, this worked. Let's do another one. Let's see how far we can take this. Sure. That's awesome, man. That's, that's so cool. And what I was reading, Ron, from, uh, from that movement now, you've gone all the way through that, that corporate life. You've branched out into that entrepreneurial space. And something that you talk a lot about in your Facebook feed now, I noticed was investing. You've taken the, the income and you've moved that into, into being an investor. And in fact, when you look at Ron Douglas's profile, it, it states clearly that investing is, is one of your feathers in the cap now. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't know how long this internet business, this publishing business would last. So I wanted to take the money and do something with it because my ultimate goal was financial freedom to not have to go back to the corporate world. So that's what I did early on. And uh, really, I got started investing in real estate because my mother's house went into foreclosure about wow. 10 years ago. And I had to kind of step in and learn the game really quick and help her get out of that situation. And then I started investing in, in other like, cash flow properties from what I learned from that experience. Wow. And, and um, what's, is that the main focus of your day now? Are you, are you driving around looking for investments or like what, what's a day in the life of Ron Douglas? Uh, well, I'm not that active in looking for new investments. I'm more of a passive cash flow investor. 
Um, a normal day, I usually work off a checklist, usually focused on growing my audience, focused on, uh, you know, getting deals, getting new webinars booked. I do a lot of uh, educational webinars and um, just interacting with my, my customers, my tribe, communicating, sending emails, uh, doing live streams in my group, that type of thing. Okay, then, cool. You know, also very focused on spending time with my kids, helping them kind of grow. My, my son's really into basketball. I've been helping him with that a lot lately. I played basketball coming up in college and whatnot, so I've been really focused on trying to make him a superstar. Are you a, are you a psycho sideline coach or are you the, the uh, quiet talk in the corner? No, I'm, I'm easy going. I'm easy going. When we, when we work out together, like I, I work out with him. I'm a little demanding, but I'm not the type of guy that's <laughs> yelling at the coach and stuff. Now, when you when you're working out together, is he is he coming out on top, or is he? Or are you still uh, putting him putting him away? Well, he's only twelve. Oh, so. Okay, all right. So he's got another maybe two years until he's cleaning you out. Yeah, yeah. Little... <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. What what would you say was your biggest achievement so far, man? Like, I mean, this to me, this seems like hard work, real hustle and grind has created something that is amazing for you, that ability to spend time with, with the kids. And from an entrepreneur's perspective, I think that model would be one that people look up to. So what would you say is your biggest achievement so far in that space? I would say not blowing all the money. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. No, just you achieving some... financial freedom, being able to, you know, come and go as I please doing something smart with the money, which enabled me to spend time with my kids, spend time with my wife, enabled me to bring her home from the corporate world as well. That was a big- Wow, achievement. that's cool. That's an awesome one. Would you say that the, um, that the, I guess, corporate education you had coming through college helped with your financial acumen? Like, do you think you learned financial wisdom in that space so that you didn't blow all the money? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I was deep in finance. I worked for JP Morgan Chase. I was a financial controller. I was a financial analyst. So I knew all about, you know, forecasting, budgeting, all that type of stuff, not being able to put your money in smart investments and, and time value of money, watching your money grow. Yeah, so I really got exposed to that. I'm a chartered financial analyst as well. So that helped out. That's really cool. Finances. Do you see do you see a lot of kids these days? Um, uh, blowing it all, like you know the the Instagram influencer who 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 just got paid twenty five grand for that particular post, and the next thing you know, they're driving a new Ferrari. No, absolutely, absolutely, it's more common than than you know. Like financial intelligence is is definitely something that needs to be learned by a lot of people, and a lot of people don't you know don't have money and never had a reason to learn it. And then when they get money, it's like you know they haven't put the time in to really understand what to do with it. Yeah, for sure. Would you recommend any, is there any literature you would, you would put in the hands of those kids or, you know, somebody who's just starting out, is there, is there a, a step-by-step -step or financial set of books that you would pass along? Uh, I would say, you know, you could start out with the, the classics like uh, Think and Grow Rich was a really good book. It's not really a financial book, but it's more like uh, how to get wealthy, how to gain financial independence type of book. Yep. And there's a lot of different investing books, guys like uh, Peter Drucker and uh, you know, Warren Buffett and, and guys like that. Just study, study the legends, man. You can't go wrong. Absolutely. I, I know from, from uh, personal experience, I started with Kiyosaki uh, in that whole Rich Dad Poor Dad thing, and, and that kind of changed my world. So good, uh, good thing. Speaking of, speaking of the kids, um, one question I love to ask, Ron, is, is if you had some stage time on stage with a room full of graduate students, these are the kids just coming into what we call, I guess, the real world, what, would, what advice would you give to that room full of students to help them on their way? Well, actually, uh, Kiyosaki's book was the one I was thinking of. I don't know why I said thinking grow rich. I said I was, I was thinking of the- uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad? Yeah, yeah, Rich Dad Poor Dad. That's the one I was thinking of. But yeah, to a room of college grads, I would just say, you know, just try to have a vision for what you want your life to be like. You know, if you want to gain wealth, if you want to, to be rich, focus on doing things that have the potential to get you there. Sure. Right. And then have a circle of people, like meet people, have a circle of people, offer to you know, help people, try to get mentorship in that field of where you ultimately want to go. You know, don't be afraid to ask for help, but don't be afraid to be helpful as well. And, and try to find the people that are doing the things that you want to do and be around them as much as possible to kind of learn you know, from their mistakes, learn what it took, learn their breakthroughs. 
and I would say that that would that would get you a lot further than than most people. Would you would you recommend like uh, picking picking some role models and doing like an internship, doing a three six months free free work, go and learn the skills kind of thing? Oh, absolutely, especially if it's in the field you you want to get into. Yeah, for sure. But I would say you know a lot of people want to get wealthy and then they go pick something you know to to do with their life that doesn't really have the potential to get them where they want to go. So you want to make sure you've got a big enough pie at the end of that chase, right? Yeah, yeah. You could be a school teacher and, and uh, it's very noble and everything, but no matter how hard you work as that school teacher, you're always going to be limited with what you can make. You don't have the potential to really get wealthy from it. Yeah, so sure. if, you know, if, if that's your goal, then that's your goal. But if your goal is to gain wealth, focus on doing something that has that potential to get you there. So we're saying we're not saying don't be a school teacher. If you've got a passion to be a school teacher, be a school teacher. Right. But if you also have the peg on the board for wealth, like pick up a side hustle and you know put something into play that's going to play you for a long time. Yeah, right, right. Be yeah. intentional with what you want to accomplish, and you know set your goals and, and focus on it. I love and it. Get what you focus on, especially when you're young, starting out. If that's really your focus, stick with it. Overcome all the obstacles. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it, and you're going to get what you focus on. Well, even though you didn't uh, didn't mean to quote "Think and Grow Rich," it sounds like it's it's sunk in anyway, man. So that's uh, that's some good advice, um, mate. When when we look at what you've achieved, so where you've come from, as you said, that one bedroom apartment, you know, moving through through school and through college, doing well, breaking out into that entrepreneur space, and then doing really well in that world. That, as I mentioned, is is a heck of a resume and, and an amazing uh, journey to come across. But I'm sure there's been some stumbles along the way. What would you say was the biggest um, whoops? moment or or mistake that you've made and and what did you learn from that uh i mean by by far the biggest mistake was was partnering with someone who you know wasn't a a good partner and we had issues and it became a a big long legal battle wow that's another thing yeah if i could do it over i would have never gone that route uh you know when, when you when you form a partnership with somebody it's like a marriage and back then i didn't realize it right but uh over the years, I learned because it's hard to get out of it. Either he has to buy you out, you have to buy him out, or you have to let the judge decide what's, what's going to happen. And, and right. You know, Decade long legal battle that's just now coming to an end. Wow. You know, okay. Now settling up, and it's really been a, a monkey on my back for, for many years, just partnering with the wrong person. And then, you know, once I started to get successful in my other businesses, he was coming after me for that money, saying that. You know, he's part of that as well. So it's just an ugly, ugly thing. Wow. So your partner, choose your partners wisely in business and in life. Fortunately, I got it right with uh, my spouse. I ch- chose that partnership right. And that's been a, a big blessing for me. Awesome. Very, very cool. So going back to the, the time when you were putting that partnership together, like I, I'm pretty sure that when you guys were sitting in the room and and, and talking about what you were going to do, you were both full of juice, full of, full of let's go do it, let's, let's get it happening. If you, if you could wind back to that room where it all came together, knowing what you know now and still wanting to conquer the world and maybe do the project with that particular person, how would you structure things differently to, uh, to avoid the headaches that you've come across now? Well, I would have uh, been more specific up front about, you know, I'm going to have my own separate businesses. So this is not like just a non-compete where we can't do anything else. You know, we're going to work on this project. So I would partner on, I would have partnered with him on just that one project, right. not on everything else that he could try to make a, a claim on. Nice. You want to be very, very specific. One of my problems was uh, I originally, I wrote the book, America's Most Wanted Recipes. And um, me and this partner, we had a company together, a marketing company together, and we were doing email marketing. And the book was already published. It was a, an ebook, and it was already selling. And I brought that book into the partnership that we had together to start right. I started selling it with, to that email list. And I should have had it up front to say, you know, this is my book. I'm just bringing it. That's, the term should have been clearly laid out. I'm just bringing it to this company to market it. No way it's gonna, is it ever going to be owned by this company. It's just a marketing agreement. So you have to be specific about what your t- intentions are because once things get – kind of combined and, and confused it, it it leads to a lot of trouble long term so yeah uh, that is 
That's really good advice, man. That's absolutely great advice because I'm sure people listening to the podcast right now are, you know, they may be in a situation where they're going out, they're getting the partnerships, they're getting that stuff together. Define the boundaries of what's covered because, you know, you might wake up tomorrow and have another great idea. You, you don't want to be restrained in the ability to follow that through. Absolutely. And what's crazy is like, we just, you, we had, you start an LLC agreement together and we just use kind of like the standard out the box LLC operating agreement that you can print online. Yeah. And uh, we were doing that just to have an LLC, just to avoid legal issues and avoid people coming after our personal uh, assets and stuff. And it turned out to be the worst thing I, I ever signed. Should've wow. Never, should've, I should have had a lawyer. So sometimes you try to be cheap. And I mean, I didn't have a whole lot of money when I first started, so, you know, we're talking 2000, the year 2000. Yeah, but I should have just you know paid a few hundred dollars just to have a lawyer you know consult with this and go over everything and yeah right try to save money and I, I didn't and it turned out to be a huge mistake. Fantastic. Well, I, again, hopefully for the people who are listening to the podcast, they can have a look at that and you know reach out to uh, to get some of that advice before before things blow up because if it's uh, you know if uh, either if it's a failure or if it's a success and let's hope it's a success, either one of those two paths unless you have that clarity is going to cause trouble, you know, when, when things start to bubble at either end. So very, very cool. Much more trouble when the money comes, I could tell you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. When there's, when there's a success to be had, everybody wants a piece of it, I'm sure. Yeah. So what, Ron, when you, we were talking about um, uh, going back to the, to the graduate kids and, and we said um, have clarity in what you want to do, be able to set a goal and focus that through. That's I think that's really strong advice and a, I hear that a lot in the interviews that we're doing. So it resonates all the way through. What's one of the things, if you think about entrepreneurs today, investors today, business owners today, that kind of community, what do you feel isn't talked about enough in those circles? Isn't talked about enough amongst entrepreneurs? Yeah. I would say uh, just having a, more like a five or 10 year plan for what you want to do with your business and your life, right? Because uh -huh. a lot of people just jump in. And it's just grind, 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 grind. And they have no idea exactly what direction they want to take longer term. You know, they just focused on the short term money and um, no idea how they want their life. So a lot of people, you know, should just take a step back and say, in five years, here's exactly what I want my life to look like. And yep. is what I'm doing right now leading me in that direction nice or not so, so in, in making sure that there's sorry man i didn't mean to cut you off there but making sure that there's joy at the end of the struggle right yeah absolutely absolutely you're working hard for what you've got but are you going to be happy when you've got it yeah yeah it's keeping the main thing the main thing right so it's like where do you want your life to be how, how do you want it to look and how do i keep that main goal and, and keep focusing on that thing and having like kind of singular focus towards towards getting there Nice. And obviously, you know, that, that entails helping as many people as possible, you know, along the way and, and adding value because that's how you truly make money. You add value and it's an exchange of value. But, you know, you want to be intentional about where you want this thing to go. And then at the end of it, do you want to have an exit plan? Do you want, do, are you building something that you want to sell? Yeah. Are you building something that you want to keep managing? Or are you building something that you can eventually you know, let a team manage instead of you being in it. So you have to look in your, at your personal involvement in it. And is this something you want to continue doing the same way, you know, five or 10 years from now? Nice. I like it. And, and uh, I love the phrase, keeping the main thing, the main thing. Um, and, and making sure that you've got the, the bigger picture because yeah, you're working hard. Let's, let's make sure you've got the plan at the end. That's very cool. So Ron, taking that forward, let's, let's take it forward with yourself personally. If you had an opportunity right now, to be on a, on a Skype call or on a Zoom call with yourself in 20 years time. What, do you, what advice do you think the older Ron Douglas would be giving you right now? Uh, well, I'm doing pretty well right now. I don't know. I mean, you probably would just be telling me like, don't worry about a thing. Just, you know, keep doing your thing. Spend as much time with your family as possible. The money will take care of itself. Don't focus so much on, you know, don't, don't focus so much on the business where you're neglecting the important things because, you know, I have these two kids, like they're uh, 15 and 12. And before you know it, they're going to be out of the house, you know, they're not going to be around. So I want to kind of enjoy these years with them while they're here and kind of have as much impact on them as I can. Nice. 
It sounds like uh, it sounds like old Ron Douglas has got some wisdom there, man. So he's 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 giving you the same advice as you gave the room full of kids. Be clear on what you want and don't blow it all in the process. <laughs> very very cool. What would uh, what's something that people would find surprising about you, man? Surprising about me? Uh, I love basketball. I mentioned that earlier. I used to play mm -hmm. basketball in college. I've been playing since I was um, six years old. Wow! So that's really all I did from age six to about. 22 <laughs> every day all right it was basketball i wanted to uh play for the new york knicks and uh that didn't work out and i went back to uh when i graduated college went to grad school and became a uh, financial analyst working for jp morgan did that for about 10 years on, on wall street so i wonder i wonder how many nba uh all-stars are, are working right now in, in that corporate space, probably quite a few. Did that, um, did that love of basketball from six to 22 affect your grades? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. But I still got uh, decent grades. For you sure. still got through. Yeah, but it would, would have been a lot better had I not spent a lot of time, you know, on the court. practicing and games okay. and stuff. Had, more time, had I had more time to focus on. Did you have, uh, did you have a high work ethic uh, coming through those early years, like the, the late high school, early college years, were you, were you up to all hours? Were you working hard at it or did it come naturally for you? Uh, no, it didn't come naturally at all. I'm not very athletic naturally. I mean, I could dunk, but I was never dunking on anybody. So, And uh, in New York City, where, where I grew up in Queens, New York, it was so many good players that you would literally get embarrassed if you were right. not on your A game. And, and I definitely had a strong work ethic. I had a hoop in my backyard. I would you know, just all times of the day beyond that thing. I mean, people would come by. We had like a court where everybody in the neighborhood would come by my yard. So I got to know so many different people. It was, it was funny in that, in that yard, you know, just seeing how people turned out. You know, 20 years later, you have people that became congressmen. You have people that wow. became district attorneys. And then you had other people that, that went to jail for selling drugs and, you know, doing all type of nefarious stuff. So you know, we were all in that same yard as kids playing together. And it's amazing to see how everybody turned out. It's uh, the rebounds went in all kinds of different directions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There it is. There it is. Ron, as, you've, as you're enjoying that, that success, and I love the fact that uh, your older self would say to you, hey, you're doing pretty well. Just keep doing what you're doing. As you're enjoying that, I, I want to bounce what we call a 60-second challenge off you. And this is something that, I, that, again, I just wanted to hear your opinion. A, a friend of yours, somebody that used to play ball with perhaps, somebody you haven't seen for a long time. They've been working a corporate job and they've just gone out on their own. They've been following you. They love what you've done. And they, they catch up with you for a coffee one day. The question comes across about your advice. What advice would you give someone who's just started out on their own business uh, that's been through a corporate space and has taken that leap and is sitting in front of you going, what should I do? What, what's your advice to them in 60 seconds? Well, I would say going from the corporate world to an entrepreneur, you definitely want to have discipline to be able to structure your day a certain way and not have too many distractions. Because the corporate world, you know, is highly inefficient, right? A yeah. lot of times, we, you know, if you, if you give somebody something to, to do and they and you give them six hours to do it, they'll take six hours to do it. When you're working for yourself, if you can get it done in an hour, knock it out, get it done in an hour, work off of a checklist, learn how to delegate, you know, don't be afraid to, to hire and uh, especially people that generate revenue for your company and, and learn how to, to take what you see in the corporate world and, and manage it and uh, just have a strategic focus on your own business and, and be disciplined about it and you'll get pretty far. So uh, don't go to work, make a coffee, have a water chat at your own home. Like you can literally get done. I found this personally. You can get done so much more than you would do in that office environment where, you know, Facebook's a distraction and everything else is a distraction when you put your hat on. So your advice to that person is just knuckle in, get it done and, and uh, do a checklist of what you've got to achieve and, and tick it off every day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also focus on, uh, I would say also one of the biggest pressure points working for yourself is the, the roller coaster of your, your income that's going to come in. So I would say focus on building a solid base of recurring income and, and whatever you do. I wish I would have done that earlier on in my career, just focused on building that solid recurring income. And you could, you know, there's many ways you can do it. You could do it through investments, you can do it through your own business, but you definitely want to have that steady base, that, that check that's going to come in each, you know, each, each month to, kind of take that stress off of these bills.
Yeah, like, definitely. Know. I again, personally speaking, I know that the the struggle for a single sale versus the struggle for a sale that that continues to pay is the same. So you may as well take the one that keeps paying you month after month. And if you've got a product in your space right now, uh, actually, that's a great question for you. If I've got a product in my space and it's a single sale product, how would I how would I put something in play that had a recurring back end on that? Right. Well, I guess it depends on on the product, but I mean, you could add an element of some type of support community that people can join where they have, get ongoing support related to that product at a, maybe at a higher level, maybe some type of group coaching element you can add to it, maybe some type of software you can add to it where you, know, either you create it or license it yourself. Um, you can look at adding some type of uh, similar products that they get each month that, that add on to that, that product to yep. keep it going. So if they're interested in that one product, Maybe they can get a similar type of product each, each month. Yeah. Added on to that, you know, things like that. Nice. And and just brainstorm it out, see what else is out there in the marketplace for, you know, in your space, what what else is a membership? What are people paying for each month? And see if you can can model something from that as well. Ron, I've got um I've got just two questions left for you. Uh, and again, I'm so grateful for your time, man. Thank you so much for for jumping on. So the first question is, who's someone that you look up to? Uh, someone that I look up to, I would just say uh, my, my grandfather. Okay. My grandfather was someone I looked up to because of his work ethic, because of his uh, never-ending uh, uh, desire to provide for his family and to sacrifice you know, his own time and his own self to make sure that, that we were okay and secure. So it's definitely someone I, I looked up to. Nice. Um, you know, Business-wise, you- I mean, a lot of the people that are doing things that, that I want to do in the industry – Yep. You know, some of the top online marketers I definitely look up to and, and study to try to uh, emulate. Nice. Very, very cool. And my last one, my last one. What's next for you? Where, where are you headed? Where will we see Ron Douglas's name popping up, uh, you know, in the next six to 12, five years, whatever's going on with you? Right. Well, I think I, I, I well, I think I know that I, I want to focus more on building up my own personal brand, the Ron Douglas brand. Like when I started in online marketing, it wasn't really about uh, building a personal brand. It was just about putting out products that people want to buy, you know, and building a brand amongst your peers, but not really, you know, getting JV partners and people to promote your products and things like that, but not really focus much on your personal brand. And, and you know, so I I definitely want to do that more. I think there's a lot of opportunity for me to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to put out a a book, you know, business related book rather than a cookbook. All right. (laughs) Feel like I'm going to do a lot more live streams and a lot more, uh, you know, co- put a lot more content out there that can help people. And I, I think that's uh, going to be. I the think use. I think that'll be a, a real gift, man, because um, with the the skills and the knowledge, the background that you've got, the way that you come across, you're a, a prolific social media uh, entertainer. So I love seeing that stuff come through. I think that'll be a real gift for people. If uh, if people listening to the podcast uh, want to follow you, like how can they how can they engage with you? Can they sign up to a newsletter? Like how can someone who is just listening to this for the first time make sure that they're getting all of that new stuff that you're going to come out with? Yeah, absolutely. You can go to rondouglas.com or you can go to uh, facebook.com forward slash like Ron Douglas. Nice. And those are places where you could uh, you know, get updates from me. Fantastic. We'll make sure we pop that in the show notes as well. Ron, congrats on the huge uh, growth from the last you know, 12 years, or 19 years, sorry, since it's come through. Uh, I have absolutely loved seeing everything that you've achieved. And, and I've certainly learned a lot from, from following you on Facebook. It's uh, amazing to be able to interview one of my role models. So thank you very much for, for that opportunity to do so. And mate, I just wish you all the very best and of success coming forward. Thanks a lot, Walt. I really appreciate being on. This was a lot of fun and uh, I uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right.